Okay, gang, so here I've got my version of Blender. I've got it running, and I have nothing on here that would be meaningful for rendering an object. So I have no lights, I have no camera, I have nothing I can do to render an object out. I can only model, and I won't get anything, and I also don't have anything in my scenes collection. So in my world properties, um, I need to make some changes here, and I need to add in an environmental setup up on the top here under the outline. So under scene collection, I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to go to new collection. I'm going to rename this environment. And in the environment option or in the environment collection, I want to add in a light and a camera. So I'm going to come down to my 3D viewport. I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to come over and add in a light and I'm going to add in a sun. Now I'll change that to the side view. I'm going to bring that sun up. I'm going to zoom out quite a bit. I'm going to bring that up and over, and then I'm going to move this little dot here so it aims towards the center of this, the 3D cursor or center of the viewport. And that should give us a nice shadow effect when we go to head to do our model. I also need to add in a camera, so I'm going to do Shift A, and I'm going to come down to Camera, and then we'll add in a camera, and I'm just going to move that up and over, just like that. And if I hit zero on the camera view, I can kind of aim this to my center of my 3D viewport or the 3D cursor. Hit zero again to turn that off. And now that that's done, you can see I have a basic setup here with environmental settings. But I need to come down to my world property settings under my uh, tabs here. So what we're going to do is click on this little icon to bring up this tab. And I'm going to come over to new. And it says world, which is okay. And then we're going to set, we're going to come over to background. And what I'm going to select is make sure that is background. Under color, we're not going to use any color. We're going to use an image. So now, how do I get these images? Now, there's images that we're going to use, and I'm going to show you where to get them. I'm going to come over to Google here or Bing or wherever. Just open up a browser. Once you get your browser open, I want you to go to this website, pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. This is a location where you can get some free environmental settings. Um, and they're, they're stock footage that you can get that's free to use in whatever way you want to use. Okay, so now I want to get some images, and I've downloaded a few, but I'll show you how to get some. I need an, a good indoor image, so I'm going to type in indoor, uh, and I'm just going to do a search for indoor and see what images come up. And what I'm looking for is something that has an ample amount of light in it that doesn't have too much color. Like this might have too much color, which would offer some browns and hue reflections that might not work well. This is not a bad scene, but there is a little bit of darkness and blackness might be too much there. So let's just keep scrolling until we find an image that I think is more appropriate. Here's one that's not bad. And if you click on one like that, you can come over to free download. And then you can pick what size that you want to download. Um, 1920 by 1280, that's pretty good. You know, get a nice HD version. The higher you go, the better your background will work, but the lighting effect is going to be the same. So if we just stick with normal HD, I think we'll be okay. Now, there's some other ones that you're going to want to get, and I would suggest getting something like um, granite. And the reason we're going to use granite, I'll explain in a little bit. Now, these, this top row here, those are paid. Uh, images. So if you click on this top row, it's going to bring you to a site, uh, iStock.com, and those are paid images. But the next ones below that are all free. So what you're going to do is look for like granite or marble textures that are smooth and shiny, um, or something like like rock or wood. And for instance, if I grab this particular image here, this is a nice surface color, and it it's uh, I believe this is granite or marble. Uh, marble background so this would be a marble background we can come over we can download that so if I download this image here I can save that in my background and I can also come over and do a search for other marbles I like using darker images so if I find something like this um, this black texture is very good for a surface to put your objects on when you render them and it'll make them look really good. So pixabay.com and you can download some free images to use. Okay, so once you've gone to Pixabay and downloaded all those that you like on there, and I would suggest getting a nice uh, interior version that's got more white in it than anything else. Um, and then for your surfaces, a nice light dark color, a light color, wood texture, things like that would help you to uh, get some photorealistic renders. So with that said, 
I'm going to come back to my world settings. I've got background selected. Now under color, I'm going to hit that and I'm going to come over to environmental texture. I'm going to select that. And now you see our little preview window has gone pink. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to open that image. So I'm going to hit the open button and that's going to take me to a file browser where I can load up my images. So remember where you save those images somewhere on your computer. Now you can see I have a bunch of images here and these are images that I'm going to use in this video to show you the results. But uh, let's see, I want to use a particular background. So I'm going to use this particular background. I'm going to select it and then press the open. And you can see now we'll get a preview here of what our black background will look like, but it doesn't really show us in the background itself. Now, you can turn on ambient occlusion. That's a good one to have. And if you want your background strength to be a little brighter, you could do that here, or you could just simply adjust the sun brightness. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So now that you've got that all set, let's come over to the file menu and let's come down to defaults and then save startup file and then save startup file one more time and that will save all these settings for your blender version so every time you open blender all of this will be in that same place with the possible exception because i found a little bug in blender 2.9 and on um, it doesn't reload your preview here and sometimes that will give you an error and you might have to just simply open up the image again with this little folder icon so you would hit that and then go back to your folder wherever it is and reload the image just like so. Okay, let's start modeling. Okay, with that done now, I need to add in my, uh, my base or the object that this is going to sit on because to get a realistic view, you have to understand the physics or what makes something look real. And really, there's two factors here that we're going to look for, and that's reflections and shadows. That, in particular, those two things help make an object look real when we render it in Blender Cycles. So what I want to do first is come down and create a new collection and I'm going to call this new collection Base or Stand, whatever you want to call it. Okay guys, so now I want to add a plane. I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add in a plane. I'm going to hit S60 to size that up. I'm going to press Control A to align the rotation and scale. Now we've got that, we're set in preview mode here. Hopefully everything works good from this point on. We're gonna come down to our materials tab. We're gonna hit um, new, I'm gonna hit the plus sign, new, and I'm gonna come down to where it says surface. I'm gonna select glossy surface. Now that's important because I'm using a marble or granite surface. Under color, I'm gonna select image texture. Okay, with that done, I'm gonna hit the open key. I'm gonna come over to my photorealistic renders or images that I downloaded. I'm going to hit this marble and I'm going to hit open image. That should change this base to a marble look. And if I look at this in the preview mode, I can zoom in here just like so. And you can see my, my base looks like a marble or a marble countertop. And I can then scale this up or down however I want. I'm going to scale this up just a little bit, zoom out. And now we're going to bring in the ring that we modeled. So I'm going to come over to our assets. I'm going to hit the unhide button and there's our ring. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to turn off the camera view. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. Oops. Let's grab our ring and bring that up just like that. Now obviously a ring doesn't typically stand up on a counter like that. What I want to do is just lay this down more like it would if it was just sitting on a counter. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to look at this from the side view. I'm going to hit R, X, and I'm going to rotate this down along the X axis until I get it to line flat up against our base, which is this green line. So you can see it's still not quite perfect. R, X, and then I'm going to bring that up just a little bit like so. 
I'll bring the whole model down, laying on top of our counter. Okay, that's about what I was looking for. I think I'm happy with that. Let's go back into camera view, and let's kind of orient our ring just about like so. And I'm just going to turn this a bit like that. I'm going to come over and check the value of our sun. We're at 0.60. I'm going to change that back to 0.1 because I did mess with that just a moment ago. And with that done, we'll come over to our render settings right here. And then we can select we can select the size of the render we want to do. And I've got 900 by 900, which is good for now. The next tab, uh, we go one up, is the number of renders we want. And typically, I do about 150. And that's the number of times that Blender will look at each block to render the image and make it look as realistic as possible. I have adapted sampling online. Denoising is important, so make sure you have a check mark under uh, denoising. NLM is fine. You don't have to do anything with the viewport there. Uh, so far, so good. Under filmic, I'm going to leave that just the way it is. Uh, for your supported features, you've got either CPU or GPU, whatever works for you. I'm going to leave that to my default settings. Uh, let's see, we come down to this particular block, which is our viewport layer. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about our camera settings at this point or our units. And our worldview still looks good. So with those all double checked, I've got that ring about where I'd like to see it. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, uh, get the angle about like there, and then I'll render this out to see what it looks like. Okay guys, there's our rendered ring, and you can see it's kind of dark, and if I just move this off a of screen right now and I come over to the preview, we're going to compare the final render with the actual render, and you can see, yes, it is a little bit on the dark side, so what we're going to do is close this window up, and I'm going to change some of the settings in our world settings. I'm going to bring this up to 2.0. And I'm going to take a look and see how that affects our ring. And it really didn't do much. Let's come over to sun. And then let's change the sun value. I'm going to come down here to sun value. And I'm going to change this to 2.0. Yeah, it's getting a little better. If I change this up more. What I'm trying to do is lighten up our scene. Okay, so I let that render out. And here's the results of our render. So I want to just go over in this image why I think that this looks much more realistic than you would see you know from just the standard image that you get in your viewport and that's because we have some lighting effect which gives us a shadow along the bottom we also have some reflections here under the head for where the light goes through the diamond and we can see the gold material reflecting off the stone countertop and that gives us the, the lighting the shadows and the reflections give us the uh, the, it tricks our mind into thinking that this is much more photorealistic. Obviously, you can tweak the settings as much as you want. You can use different lighting effects. Um, you've got uh, panel lights, pendant lights, uh, the sunlight, point lights, however you want to go ahead and configure your lighting and whatever background you use. Just remember, if you use a, a world setting background that has different colors in it, like reds, greens, and blues, it's going to reflect significantly off of your model. So keep that in mind, because it could change the way the model looks. And I would recommend that just play with those settings and play with some different images to see the results for yourself. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to my channel. It does help my channel grow, and I do appreciate everything that you guys do and all the comments that I get, good and bad, although I don't pay a lot of attention to the bad comments. Anyway, if this helped you, please go play, make some changes, uh, play with different images, find out for yourself how you can get some better results, and just remember that uh, a more photorealistic render of your designs will give you better results for instance, I use this for jewelry design, and uh, in almost every case, if I just show the standard cartoonish model, um, my customers just can't see the results. But when I show them something that's much more photorealistic, it almost always sells the customer on the, on the product. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.